Hello students, welcome to today's video lesson. Today we shall discuss the poem The Laburnum Top by Ted Hughes. We all know that trees serve as habitats for various living creatures, especially arboreal animals and birds. The word arboreal refers to those animals that live in trees, such as lizards, possums and even small monkeys. The third person narrator discusses one such example of the laburnum tree which serves as a habitat for various birds and insects. The poem is written in free verse. Free verse is a literary style in which poetry does not follow any particular meter or rhythm. The poem Fog by Carl Sandburg, which you have studied in earlier classes, is an example of a poem written in free verse. Before we begin with the poem, let us first discuss a little about our poet, Ted Hughes. Edward James Hughes was an English poet born on 17th August 1930. He is considered one of the greatest poets of the 20th century. He is also known for his writings for children. His poetry collection includes The Hawk in the Rain, Wolf Watching and Moortown. Meet my folks, what is the truth? And The Iron Woman are some of his notable children's books. Let us now begin with the poem. The Laburnum Top by Ted Hughes The Laburnum Top is silent, quiet still, in the afternoon yellow September sunlight, a few leaves yellowing, all its seeds fallen. Laburnum is a short deciduous tree with hanging branches, yellow flowers and poisonous seeds. It is often used for ornamental purposes. The poet describes a laburnum tree on an autumn afternoon in the month of September. The laburnum tree is still and silent, almost lifeless and inactive. Notice the alliteration in the second line, September sunlight. An alliteration is the repetition of the same letter or sound at the beginning of words in close succession. Soon after, something disrupts the stillness. Let us read on to find out who or what disrupts this stillness. Till the goldfinch comes with a twitching chirrup, a suddenness, a startlement at a branch end. Then, sleek as a lizard, an alert and abrupt, she enters the thickness and a machine starts up of shitterings and of tremor of wings and trillings. A goldfinch comes and sits on the branch of this laburnum tree. Instantly, the tree comes to life, as if startled from a trance. Next, we have a simile where the bird's movement is compared to that of a lizard. Simile is a figure of speech which involves the comparison of one thing with another thing of a different kind. It used to make a description more vivid, like how we have here in this poem, sleek as a lizard. The goldfinch is a bird with yellow feathers and it stays on a tree that has yellow flowers and leaves. We see that this creates a perfect camouflage. The cautious goldfinch enters the tree with great care so that no predator can find out her young ones. Soon the air is filled with sounds of life, the shittering sounds of chicks in their nest and the soft tremor of weak wings. Notice how musical these sounds are and how this music is woven into the still autumn air with the busy movements of the bird's wings. Here we have a metaphor where the tree is compared to a machine which starts with noise and movement. A metaphor is a figure of speech that refers to one thing by mentioning another. It describes an object or action in a way which is not really true but helps to describe the thing better. The sounds and movements created by the excited chicks and the mother goldfinch is compared to the starting of a machine. The whole tree trembles and thrills. It is the engine of her family. 
she stokes it full then flirts out to a branch end showing her bare face identity mask we have another alliteration in the first line of the stanza tree trembles and thrills the tree shakes softly due to the sudden excited movements of the young fledglings and the stillness is disturbed next we have another metaphor where the family of the mother goldfinch and her young chicks are compared to an engine the bird soon flies out to the end of the branch and reveals its face the black spot on the face of the goldfinch is called an identity mask of the bird let us move on to the last part of the poem then with eerie delicate whistle chirrup whisperings she launches away towards the infinite and the laburnum subsides to empty the bird flies out once again leaving the laburnum tree in still silence and emptiness the poet tells us how the typical sounds of birds and animals animates our everyday environment and how if the world were to be devoid of these creatures all would fall deathly silent even a force as mighty as the tree needs animals and birds to bring it to life and the natural cycle continues in this beautiful musical rhythm as more generations of species are created the laburnum tree is a small unit that reflects a large natural order where elements of nature are in harmony and animated by the signs of life brought along by a busy bird feeding its family with that we come to the end of this poem we hope this helps you to understand the poem better see you next in a recap video